Community Foundation and Brian Johnson. Good morning, how are you? Good morning, Randy. Well, I think I'm okay. Made it through the haze this morning. Yeah, you did, you did. Yeah. Found your way here, you were we all did. right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Didn't get lost. Didn't, Didn't get take lost. a right wrong no, turn anyway. No, I think it, maybe I'm being optimistic, but I think it's cleared up just a little bit from yesterday. Well, yeah, I can see so. across the street, so I okay. think so, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll agree with that. We'll get you brought some guests with you today. Some guests with us. We're, we'll talk to our interns here in a bit. Um, Kim Batten and Delaney Strasser have been with us this summer, and they've got some things they've been working on. They've got awesome. some news about a couple of things Ooh. that they'll share here too. Mm -hmm. so That's good. Stay tuned for more details. Yeah. So now you have to stay, stay listening to them. There so. you go. Hopefully. <laughs> so, I uh, wanted to start off. Of course, next week is the Fourth of July. Um, I wanted to recognize. All those that have made the celebration of this day possible, we think about folks who have made significant sacrifices in the past and, and current, and I'd like to say thank you to all of our service members who have, have made um, this celebration possible. Um, there are many who have made <coughs> significant sacrifices all the way up to the ultimate sacrifice of their lives to, to provide the freedoms that we have in our, in our country. So I want to say thank you to all those past and current service members who have made this country give us the opportunity to have conversations like this and give us the opportunity to, to celebrate our country's foundings and, and independence. So, thank you. Yes, thank you. Big thing. So, a uh, few things we got going on. Um, summer scholarships. Uh, it is that time. Still got a few of those. Of course, we had some high school seniors we were able to celebrate in May and all their accomplishments. Um, we do have a few scholarships for um, students with an application deadline of July 12th. Um, a few that are a little bit unique this year, we do have um, three for graduating high school or seniors who have just graduated. Um, Simon Deeb, Dale Eisinger and Robert Toby and George and Lyle Schwank scholarships, all those are ag focused scholarships. So. Um, if there are students from Rochester High School that graduated this year that are pursuing some sort of ag-related field, it doesn't necessarily need to be somebody that's playing the farm. It could be ag business. It could be um, any one of the number of ag-related fields. Um, so those three scholarships are available again for high school or for seniors that just graduated high school this last fall from Ro or this last spring from Rochester. So. Check those out. When are those due? They are due July 12th. Okay. So quickly as, approaching. Yes, as are the rest of these. So we have the Ginger Miller Higher Education Scholarship for students um, who are pursuing a graduate level degree. The Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship. I bet you can't guess what that field of study uh, is. Maybe law. Law. Yeah. Yes. So um, students who have graduated have been accepted into a law college in the United States. Um, one of the requirements is that they needed to spend at least three of their high school career years at a Fulton County school. Okay. Be a resident of Fulton County during that time. So, um, so that scholarship is for law students. Back home again in Indiana is a neat scholarship that helps students that maybe not necessarily degree seeking, could be, um, but if you're in a role right now with an organization and you need extra training, certification, things like that, um, and maybe a student that's going back to school. We use the term non-traditional student, so sometimes that's a student that has successfully completed a high school equivalency program or maybe going back <coughs> to school after a number of years of sitting out to complete a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree or just a um, certificate program in general. So um, that's a very neat scholarship that will help students um, fulfill those educational goals. So like we said, all of those are due July 12th. Um, the application be, can be found on our website, nicf.org, and you can click on the Fulton County link. There's a scholarship um, page that you can get the process started. The whole application is completed online. Um, July 12th is the deadline get those started now. So there's mm -hmm. there's some pieces of information that may be required from um, from different folks so you want to get started on that now and um, 
we like to help students continue their education. Um, one that we wanted to mention in particular um, was a scholarship that was not announced on, because of our, our overlooking at the Akron, um, the Tippecanoe Valley School Honor Program. Mm -hmm. um, it's really neat to go to these programs and award these students and we apologize. Um, we overlooked Kylie Trepanier. Um, and I hope I got your last name right, Kylie. I apologize if I didn't. Call me and say, hey, this is how it's pronounced, <laughs> and I'll call Randy and say, hey, can you correct that? <laughs> um, she is a 2023 graduate of Tippecanoe Valley High School and is a recipient of the Akron Los Donis, Marcus Hackworth, and Scott Seacrest Memorial Scholarship. So I'd like to say congratulations, Kylie. Um, we look forward to your success as a student in the future cool. and um, would like to say sorry for missing you yeah. during the program um, but congratulations on receiving the scholarship yes so better late than never a better late than never so um, something else that we've got going on when we think about education um, listeners may have heard the term promise indiana um, or Fulton County Promise, mm -hmm. or probably the College Savings 529 account. A lot of different things. All those things are the same thing. So we've had a really neat program in Fulton County um, since 2016, um, a program to help local grade, middle, high school students um, save for college. So a 529 savings account is one that um, parents, grandparents can create that will benefit a student as they get to college age. We'll be able to help pay for educational expenses. One of the questions we get is, well, my kid, I don't know as a kindergarten if my student is going to go to school to get a bachelor's degree. Well, the neat thing about the 529 accounts is it doesn't have to be a bachelor's degree. It yeah. could be an associate's degree. It could be some sort of mm -hmm again certified program um, to help students realize those careers but these programs are neat because you can start saving now for a student that may be going to college in 12 13 14 yeah. 15 years um, and so you have that advantage of saving now there's also some really great tax benefits mm -hmm. To a 529 savings account. I'll say the word tax credit, not just tax deduction. Yeah. And a lot of times in the foundation world, we talk about tax deduction, which is good, mm -hmm. but a tax credit is even better. <laughs> parents so like hearing parents, that. Parents like hearing that, and grandparents like hearing yes. that. And so, so this program has been going on since 2016 in Fulton County, and the goal is to help educate students and families about the benefits of college savings accounts. Um, and not only educate them, but there's also some incentives. So if students create a college savings account, um, they can be part of the Fulton County Promise program and can actually receive some matching incentives or things like honor roll. Um, just simply opening a college savings account through the Fulton County Promise program is an opportunity for parents to receive a um, incentive for that. So um, we also look at things like the fair coming up. A lot of students participating in 4-H will receive incentives. We look at the banners that are hanging downtown. Um, students that participate in that program can receive incentives. But looking back, um, some interesting numbers, we've had 760 students participate in this program wow. um, since 2016. Of those, 728 are currently active. Um, one of the neat things is this, this year we're starting to see some of those students from that first year starting to use these accounts because they've, they've completed high school and now they're going on to some form of further education. Um, another neat thing is our community has contributed over $118,000 in matching and incentive programs That's awesome. for these students. So it's really neat to see that and, and thank you to all who have donated. I know we've had a lot of individual donors, um, some great organizations um, participate in this. 
And so thank you to all who have participated in that. And I'll put a plug in. We're also raising some funds as we look towards the school year, starting enrollment for next year. Um, we could, could use some help with some more funds to help match and provide incentives for these students um, to create this program. So it, it's really neat to see this. Thank you to all who have participated in this. If you're looking for something that you're interested in donating to, want to help students, maybe not necessarily with a scholarship, but want to help students save for the future, um, we're helping them save, we're helping them build good habits, and it's really exciting to see these students starting to be able to use these funds that have been awarded over the past um, seven or eight years with this program. So, Good start. Yeah. Something else I wanted to mention, um, got some fun going on in downtown Akron this summer. Mm -hmm. The Los Donis have um, arranged a summer concert series, so Friday Night Live, Music in the Park, the little park in downtown. Yeah. Um, they always have some really great turnouts. Um, they've got a series of concerts this summer, um, the next one coming up on July 14th. Bees and the Rocker. Ah. So. Sounds like a good group. So got a little bit of diversity in June. They had the Highway 30 band um, in August. They're having Gunslinger and Island Vibe. <laughs> and in September, they wrap up the series with The Noise. Uh, so um, some fun things. But the next one will be, like I said, July 14th, Bees and the Rocker, um, 6 to 9 p.m. in the downtown park. Um, a really great um, free summer concert series for folks in the community. So, Cool. Okay, we hinted at guest, and before we do the <laughs> official introduction, one of the projects that they've been working on, they want to share some information. So like I said, we have um, Kim Batten and Delaney Strasser with us, and one of the projects these ladies have been working on is Charity Tracker. Mm. So uh, we're going to find out more about we're it. We're going to find out more about it. So <laughs> I don't know if you want to share a little bit about Charity Tracker, how it works, the project that we're working on. I think we've got a really great quote to share, maybe, or some <laughs> feedback from people currently using it. So, I guess first of all, put you on the spot, Charity Tracker. What is it? <laughs> I don't think I asked them that question. Yeah, before. we got it. You didn't but prepare me through them. They're off. very skilled. So. <laughs> so basically, what Charity Tracker is is it's a sort of database for different organizations to use. To, for a lot of different things like record keeping, um, demographics, and basically it's so that people can keep track of what they have given um, people in need so that they make sure they don't um, have repeat offenders and so that they can find some more opportunities for people and get them help. Um, I don't know if Kim yeah. wants to add on to that. But. Yeah, definitely. Kind of adding on to that a little bit, if you know what it is, you have a quote. Um, it's a one-stop shop for a lot of organizations here in town. Um, one of the people we talked to yesterday that's a constant user of it shared us that quote. Um, and we're really excited to kind of promote the overall usage within the county with this database because it's always been great remarks on how well it works. Yeah, and I think one of the neat things that we heard in our conversation yesterday is the whole concept of organizations collaborating. Um, I may walk in the door of one organization and they can help me with something and then um, Charity Tracker may give them the opportunity to find other services that I need during that conversation. Um, and it also makes it more efficient for the clients as well, so that way I don't have to fill out the same paperwork over and over and over and over again. Um, that would be helpful. I can go directly to the organizations, or in the case we were talking about yesterday, I don't even have to go to that second organization. The first organization can help yeah. because they know the services of the other organization and it, it's a really neat process um, and so we're we're offering this this is something that the community foundation and united way have partnered on the last few years um, to provide this at no cost to organizations in the community so um, we're doing some promotion on this and have an event coming up Maybe we invite do. everybody <laughs> listening to come to that if they're interested. Yes, so on July 11th, you are invited to our Trade Tracker event um, at the Northern Indiana Community Foundation. It'll be from noon to 1 p.m. There will be lunch. 
it's another plug in there. Um, and we're really just hosting all these people to work on building the usage of organization throughout the county. And it's really a chance to see what Cherry Tracker truly is. The tutorials will be there kind of showing you step by step opportunities to ask any questions that you have. And it's, it's a good opportunity for organizations to collaborate in the community, understand who can help who, because we often get questions at our office about, do you guys provide these services? And my standard answer is no, we don't provide direct services, but I can connect you with an organization that does provide those right. services. So really this is, this is the expansion of that network to be able to have everybody know what others can provide. And so I can say, hey, you know what, if I need this, I can send you over here right. and know that that organization can help you instead of you having to go and say, do you serve this? So it's really a neat uh, efficiency <coughs> tool and collaboration. It really provides better services for the clients that are served as well. So I mean, thank you. So, so July 11th, noon to one, food. Come here about Charity Tracker if you're interested <laughs> in that. We'll be out and about in the community the next few days. Um, stopping in at organizations and um, providing these invitations and also um, working on um, maybe building our group here in Point. So cool. So I just introduced Kim Batten and Delaney Strasser. Right. I'm going to introduce them again. <laughs> and put more pressure on them. One thing we've done each year, um, we're, we're so grateful Lily Endowment gives us the opportunity to um, have interns. In, in for us it works out best in the summertime um, just because of the geographic location but we've, we've had for a number of years we actually have some interns that have returned to work for us as well so a, a great way of kind of building that pipeline so we're very grateful to Lily Endowment for um, these opportunities and, and supporting this program um, but we have two interns with us this summer um, Kim Batten this is her third year with us, and we're very glad that she keeps coming back. <laughs> and Delaney Strasser, this is her first year with us. So um, since Kim has done this a couple years, we always invite the interns in to come mm -hmm. and kind of share what they've learned about the foundation in their time. So since Kim is the old pro at this, <laughs> say, first of all, introduce yourself. Give us things like where you're going to school, what you're studying, where you graduated from high school, although that's been a few years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so my name is Kim Batten. I recently graduated, I guess you said recently, it was 2021, two years ago from Rochester High School. Um, so, my third summer with the Northern Foundation, and I really love it. So, I to come back every year. Um, I'm a current junior at IUPUI, soon to be IU. Indianapolis, um, but I'm studying political science on a pre-law track, and I have some focuses in business, legal studies, um, three semesters left, graduating a little early, okay. so we're getting close to it. Um, if she's slightly stressed out looking, she may be studying for a big LSAT yeah. test uh, yes, at some point yes. in the studying future. Yes, studying for the so. LSAT, searching for internships that fall semester is kind of my, my focus right now along with this internship, so busy summer. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to be back. Right. Okay, and Delaney? Delaney Strasser, tell us same thing. Where are you going to school? What you're studying? Where you graduated from? So I graduated just last year from Caston Junior Senior High School. I am a current sophomore at Butler University, where I study English professional writing, also on a pre-law track. Except I'm not as far in deep as Ken, so <laughs> <laughs> not as concerned about the LSAT yet. Yeah, but yeah, I am yeah. getting there. Yeah. Um, my focus is more kind of on the writing side, um, a, le a little bit less on the business. That's not really my thing. But um, I really love at the Community Foundation so far. This is only my first year, but I hope they invite me back <laughs> because yeah. I've had a lot of fun. Well, we hope you accept our invitation. To come back. <laughs> so, okay. So, the million dollar question that we always ask is what have you learned at the Community Foundation? Both of these ladies received scholarships mm -hmm. through the Community Foundation or Lilly Endowment. Um, and that's usually what people know when they walk into the Community Foundation. Oh, you guys do scholarships. Well, we do do scholarships, but that's only about a third of what we do. <laughs> so my question at the start of the summer to new interns is always, keep a list of things that you learned that you didn't know the foundation was involved with. So we'll start off with 
Kim. Okay. Tell us something or some things that you've learned about the foundation this summer or enjoyed being involved with. Yeah, so I definitely had to change my answer in the past two. I've learned a lot. Um, and I feel like this summer I really focus on the grant side of Community Foundation. Um, that's through events we've done or um, marketing promotion that we've done and kind of more exact into that. The poverty simulation okay. this past summer. Um, we learned a lot about the communities and this big community and how people are struggling in different ways and that really put me through a lot of how we can help those situations. Um, it was kind of, it was a lot, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and the scavenger hunt on the Facebook, so make sure you go check that out. Um, yeah. Phone kind of will be in August, but you can still support the Miami and Stark County pictures. And kind of what that is, that we've been going around the county, Delaney and I have been taking pictures cryptic pictures, you're not going to know where it's at, I guess. <laughs> um, we'll see how well people know the county. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And we've been going around taking pictures of locations that we've granted to. It's been a lot of fun to go see what we've done in the past, past five years, past 10 years, past 20, past 30 even. It's been a lot of fun to see what we, the grant dollars have impacted in the communities. Um, and we have some future meetings set up and discuss nonprofit law and charitable gift planning. We much more your free law. We're excited to kind of learn a little bit more about the law behind the Community Foundation and those future meetings we have set up. Yeah. Exciting. A lot, of, a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kim. Um, Delaney, if you want to share some things, what have you learned yes. this summer? Um, as Brian was mentioning, especially coming in as um, a first year college student, I really only knew the Community Foundation for scholarships. And that's really all I knew about. I think in my interview they asked me what they did at the Community Foundation. I was like, um, I'm not really quite sure. <laughs> but I ha I've learned a lot. I've learned that the Community Foundation impacts our community um, a whole lot more than I think the, the normal person would see. Um, like Kim said, there's grants, there's funds, um, and they're kind of just everywhere, involved with everything is what I've learned. I've met a lot of very, very valuable people so far in just my first year. I've made a lot of really great connections, so that's been really great. Um, I have also learned a lot about marketing because I have recently started the Northern Indiana Community Foundation Instagram page, um, along okay. with Kim. So that. So has for been those really of cool. us that aren't real familiar <laughs> with Instagram, how do we find the Northern Indiana Community Foundation Instagram? Page? So basically, just go to Instagram and search Northern Indiana Community Foundation, and okay. it will come up. <laughs> but we post a lot of really great stuff on there. Um, we've started doing scholarship Sunday chains where we highlight past scholarships and kind of the requirements of that for upcoming seniors and non-traditional students just to um, spread that information and highlight past recipients. We also have started highlighting funds on Fridays um, just to kind of spread some awareness to the fact that there is other things at the Community Foundation other than scholarships. So that's kind of the goal there. Yeah. What's well, neat. We we're talking with um, Delaney Strasser and Kim Batten, who are summer interns with us. Um, I guess this is the time where I'll say, what else would you like to share? <laughs> mm -hmm. The pressure's on. The pressure is on. The pressure on. is on. Yeah. Um, I think kind of what she mentioned, I'll kind of repeat that. We really are everywhere, and I never really realized that before. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of coming in to, oh, scholarships. I was received a couple of my own. I was really blessed to receive that. When I kind of got into this internship, so I researching it a little more. It was amazing to see what all the community foundation reaches out to. You pretty much look at any business or activity or organization, event, and community foundation has some part in that process of planning it, giving it, anything like that. Yeah, and I think when you talk about that, um, things like the fair coming up in the near future, um, the 4-H fund, Mm -hmm. We can't mention the 4-H fund without mentioning the name Joanne Bendel. Yes. You know, most people don't say, hey, I want to support that 4-H fund. They say, I want to support that fund that Joanne started. <laughs> um, and just recently able to help put a new roof on one of the buildings. Has yeah. helped with a number of things out at the fairgrounds, things that, that we may not see. You look at downtown, you think about like the banner program, something that been able to support so you you start looking around and seeing a lot of those things and I think that's the neat thing about the scavenger hunt too that you mentioned yes. was you know we see these things and we may not realize that these are here because donors yeah. said we can help make these things possible exactly. so 
I'm not going to give you too much of a hint, but a lot of the August dates will be things around that we've granted to. Which is a lot, a lot of options. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> not, not an exhaustive list, <laughs> but, um, will be a lot of those things. So, um, Delaney, any final thoughts that you want to share with us? I guess I would just kind of say that if you have the opportunity to do so, just to try and get involved with the Community Foundation and learn a little bit more about it. Um, before my internship, I wouldn't have thought that that was really something I could do before I'm older, old enough and have a stable job and have money, but I have learned that th through being there, there are other ways to um, get involved within the community through the Community Foundation, such as women's giving circles and different types of events we hold, um, some free of charge, some with not very big costs that you can come to, like Kim said, the poverty simulation. So. Um, just try and like look out on our Facebook, Instagram, um, our sign in, f in front of the building for different events and just try to get involved because it is a very cool experience. Yeah, and I think building on that, it's, it's neat because part of what a community foundation does is make things possible for those of us that aren't independently wealthy. Um, my donation can be combined with others' donations and make a big impact. You start thinking about, you know what, last year one of the big things that happened was we had this really cool Friday night where they turned on the lights and the marquee <laughs> yes. at the Times Theater. And now the Times Theater is open and showing <coughs> movies. And um, some of those things right. happened because, not because one person donated a bunch of money, but because a bunch of people donated money, a bunch of people donated time, got involved in that. So that's, that's the really neat thing that we see here at the foundation is just that collaboration and, and things throughout the community. So well, we've been speaking with Kim Batten, Delaney Strasser. Both of these ladies are interns with us this summer. Um, we've enjoyed having you. I say enjoyed having you. Um, normally we do this at the end of the summer, but they had a schedule conflict. So <laughs> Um, we're doing this busy, kind of in busy, the middle of the summer, busy, so they're, busy people. they're overachievers because they had a month less time than they should have had to, <laughs> to come up with these ideas. But these young ladies have been doing a wonderful job with us. Um, we've been appreciated having you this summer. Um, if they call you or knock on the door, know that they're working with the Community Foundation because, like I said, we'll be out and about in the community the next couple of days um, promoting the Charity Tracker event. But um, They've done a great job. We hope to come back next year. We'll see. <laughs> but Keep your um, fingers we, crossed. we appreciate they've done some really great things this summer. So thanks for joining us this morning, ladies. And thanks for being here this summer. Of course. Thank you for having us. So a few things. Just a reminder about the scholarships that we've got going on. Um, the Ag Scholarships for just recent high school graduates, um, the higher education law, um, continuing education scholarships, deadline is July 12th. Um, you can find that information at nicf.org, click on the Fulton County page, the scholarship um, page will have where you can start the application online. Um, if you have questions about other things that we've talked about this morning, you can always find us again online, nicf.org like us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Now that Delaney's got Instagram going, I need to mention Instagram, so search for Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Okay, uh, Give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas or goals or aspirations you have for Fulton County. Thanks for coming in, ladies. Thank you, and uh, enjoy your, uh, the rest of your summer. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Community